Hi everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am here with something totally different today. This comes from an idea that I had a long time ago and I am finally putting it into action. I'm at least going to give it a try. I love to make paper beads. Love, love, love to do that. And Skylar loves to paint. <laughs> this is from a long time ago, but um, I did tell her just slap paint on there. You know, it's not about a picture because this is going to be cut up. And I told her that if she painted some pages for me that I'd pay her per page and also the um, penny auction winnings that we get for selling her paper. Now, I know a lot of people would be like, I don't even know how to cut triangles. I don't want to do any of that. So I am going to be cutting the paper for you, and you're going to get triangles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the paper. I will show you how it's done in case you want to do this at home. And I do have paper bead videos on my very old Darlene's Crafty Crew YouTube channel. I'll link to that down below, and you can go check out some of the really awesome paper beads I was making for videos, but then I stopped doing that, and I want to get back into it. Um, what was I going to say? I completely went off track. I actually had to stop and edit the first minute and a half of this video because I couldn't remember what I was talking about, and I still don't. So I'm just going to jump back in. I am going to be cutting the triangles for you guys, and I don't know exactly what size I will make them, but I'm going to show you you know, and explain all of this in case you want to make your own beads, but then if you would like a piece of Skylar's artwork and turn that into beads, but it won't be like this. Like I said, I'm going to do the cutting for you. You know, I'm going to try it that way. Maybe you guys would prefer the paper, but I just thought some of you would like to have the paper pre-cut. And I'm going to make two beads. And then I will show you those two beads, but those beads won't go in the envelope because then that jacks up the price because it becomes a package because of the thickness. And I don't want to um, worry about them getting flattened and all that, but I will show you two beads. I will save those two beads either for myself to just know that it's a collection of beads that came from Skylar's artwork or... Maybe once I have a whole bunch of those, maybe we'll put those on eBay. Whatever, I'll leave it up to her. Maybe she'll want the beads. I don't know. She'll be excited that I've got this finally started. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you that you need a piece of paper, either painted or markers. Now, you can use watercolor markers, but it's going to bleed and blend when you're rolling them, which is sometimes super cool, but Sharpies, you can use Sharpies, you can paint, you can draw lines with Sharpies, you can do anything you want. You can use magazine pages, you can use um, junk mail, anything you want to use. It's paper. But a painted paper like this is a good way to start because it, it has some bulk to it and it's, uh, it's just a little bit easier to roll. Now I'm going to flip this over on my mat just so I can do some measuring. I don't know. I think for this one I'm just going to do one inch. We'll keep it simple. Do I have something? So you can just eyeball the cutting, but I'm going to go ahead and show you, you know, a pretty foolproof way to do this by just using a ruler. If you have a ruler, you don't need a mat like this. And on this edge, I'm going to just start cutting, uh, not cutting, I'm going to mark every inch. So I'm going one inch in and marking one inch. And, you know, I'm making the line, I'll show you after, kind of long so it will be easier to see when I'm actually cutting the paper. So I just have little marks like this every inch. Now on the other side, I'm going to do um, the first mark because these are inches. Cut that in half, a half an inch. The very first mark is going to be at the half inch. Now I'm going to put that half inch on a line and it's one inch after that. It's just going to help you to get a good triangle shape. So again, a half inch in, and that's because I was doing one inch. Half inch in for the first line, and then an inch apart after that. 
I'm going to uh, get rid of this. I just wanted to do that step with this for easy measuring. And you do not need a handy dandy paper cutter like this, but I love my paper cutter. It absolutely needs to be dusted. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the first edge that's an inch, 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 no half inch involved. And I'm going to put, um, oh, you can use scissors. And if you think you can't cut straight, take a ruler and connect. So you would connect this one inch down to this half inch and this one inch down to the next line. Because you want to create triangles. Let me show you that. Actually, I'm starting where I went in a half an inch. I'm going to connect this line to the line up top. And then I'm going to say, stay on that same line and I'm connecting down here to the next one inch. And you're just going to continue doing that, this one to this one, and this one to this one. I completely went on the wrong line <laughs> because I initially had these marked at three quarters of an inch and then I changed my mind. So we're going to just go like this. So ignore this mistake. Isn't that unfortunate that I had to make a mistake? I don't want to screw you up. So let's, let's start on the other end. Oh my God. This to this this to this. So you're just going to keep going up and down until you have what looks like a bunch of triangles. And then you can just uh, cut. So now I can actually use the lines that I drew and I'm just going to turn it on my paper cutter. It doesn't have to be exact. That's my rules in life, doesn't have to be exact. Now see, this is a perfectly good piece of paper, but it's much, much smaller because it doesn't have an inch base. So I'll put that aside. And now I'm going to cut on the other line. Some of you might find this much easier to do with scissors. And I'm just going to do this all the way across. This last one is harder to do, so I'm going to use scissors because I don't have um, a lot to hold on to. And then I'll just finish off this end. Okay, those two little ends and all these scrappy pieces, um, you can just put those aside if you're doing your own and um, you can turn them into little beads. So excited to do this just really really am. I forgot to tell you that um, when we have the design sometimes it makes more sense to cut this way sometimes it makes more sense to cut that way depending how the design is. It happens that this piece of paper she did like four corners of like purple purple green green and then just yellow everywhere so it didn't really matter at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one bead that, um, because it's the opposite. See, like, this piece had the green down and the purple up. So one bead will have a green base and end with the purple and a lot of yellow on that one tip. The other one will have a purple base and end with green. So I'm going to make one of each of these to show you guys. And then let me see how many that gives you. One, two... Three, four, five. I don't even know if I counted right. 
think there's 18. When I put them on eBay, I'll tell you exactly. So you're going to be able to make a lot of beads. Now, is it enough to make a necklace? No, maybe a bracelet. But what you can do is you just get the plastic pony beads to use as spacers. You add other things. It's just super cool. So let's get started. I am going to be using a paintbrush to roll on. A skewer is a good thing, but what I like about the paintbrush is it, you know, I start the paper like here and then the paintbrush tapers, so it's like really easy to just slide it off. And so that's what I'm going to do. Then you need white glue and the thickness of your paintbrush stick or skewer. That determines the size of the hole. Now, you know, a really big hole makes a bigger bead, but it, it doesn't look as good when it's strung because it's got a gigantic hole. But it's really good for kids, especially if they want to string stuff on yarn, things like that. So it all depends, you know, if you're actually intending to make yourself some jewelry or not. And, um, and like I said, a skewer is good, but it's straight. You're going to need some white school glue, any kind. And then you need a place to dry your beads. And I just have one of these cheapy frogs. Is that what they call these? And I just stuck a bunch of toothpicks. I left it wrapped in plastic. And uh, that's where I can dry the beads. And here we go. Very simple. I'm going to just uh, open my glue. I will Mod Podge these two after, just to show you how you can do that also. And I start by, uh, no, I don't, I don't put glue right away. It's been so long, I don't even remember how to do this. How do I do this? <laughs> yeah, I guess, okay. So I'm going on the kind of fat part, and you just put your one inch part, let me on your stick and you just roll a couple times. You don't want to put glue on the very end because you don't want it to get glued to your stick or paintbrush. Now some people roll all the way to the end and then just put a dab of glue. I don't do that because I find that your bead will become rock hard if you put some glue at the tip like this at, up here and just spread it. That's why I said if you're using watercolor paint or watercolor markers, there will be some bleeding, but it can be really nice. And then I just rub it in, and now I continue to roll. And I'm telling you, these beads, you would swear they were wood or plastic or acrylic or something. And I, this is all acrylic paint. I just wanted to let you know that. And then you have something that looks like this. Now, this is just a regular tapered bead. I like the looks of the shorter beads because they get a little bit more chunky. But hey, we're going to be doing this again. I thought I would just start with something simple. So I really like this. Now I'm going to just take it off and put it on a, a toothpick to dry for a little bit. Next, and I'm only doing these two. And um, again, I'm just doing a couple rolls and I'm going to put some glue there and I just slide it down and it gets on my fingers so the glue can be on both sides. It makes really nice beads, I promise you it does. I'm going to show you a lot of different ways to make beads. Um, how you can just take paper like this, but yet make really chunky beads by adding other paper. Look at that. How easy that is. So you can see one has a little bit more purple. This is the purple base. And then this one had the green base. And they're just going to all look good no matter what we do. So let me get my Mod Podge. I'm going to Mod Podge these two beads so you can see how I do that. I like to use the gloss. There's a whole bunch of different kinds of Mod Podge and uh, gloss is really cool. I generally like to put two or even three coats just because I like doing that and it really makes the beads um, really hard and very water resistant. I mean you wouldn't want to go swimming with a bracelet or a necklace uh, but you certainly can get them wet and just hang them to dry. So I was going to use this paintbrush as the painting 
brush to put the Mod Podge, but that's a really sorry ass looking tip. So I'm not using that. Um, let me get another brush. And you know what I thought? Skylar and I have been talking about her having her own eBay. So the next time I get to go see her, well, see, we planned this thinking that I would be there by now, but with the virus, that's not happening. But um, when I go see her, I would teach Derek, her dad, my son, how to list for her. And then there's a lot of crafty things that she would like to just put, um, you know, on eBay. And he could help her with that. But uh, I'm not going to be with her anytime soon. So I didn't bother starting her eBay. But I'm going to try to do that. And I can put the paper on her eBay. So I'm not sure if I'll get that done in time for this video. I, you know, I can't remember. It's been 20 years since I joined eBay, so I don't remember the steps. And I'm sure things have changed. But the link will be down below for the penny auction for this. I'm going to start with just this. And we'll take it from there. And just know that it's going to be sent by me. So even though it's a brand new account, you can trust it and all that stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to take a bead and I'm going to put it on a paintbrush or something. This is the one I use. You just want it so it's not going to roll around. and Or you could just use a bigger paintbrush. But I'm going to go ahead with this and I've got this guy, which is a much better tip. And I'm just going to do these two beads. If your Mod Podge is impossible to open like mine was, just soak it in some warm water. I'm telling you, it has been a long time. And I'm just going to, um, you know, just slap some on there. And what I'm going to do is not make it too thick because then I can make, um, do a several coat, do a several coat. I can do several coats and I'm just going to slide that off and put that on the toothpick like that and do the next one. And we can, um, we can dry Mod Podge in the oven. So I have the oven on at 170, which is the lowest that mine goes. And um, just because I'm in a hurry, normally I just let these dry for a little bit. And you don't have to let the first coat completely dry. But um, after you put a couple of coats, they can feel a little tacky for a little bit. But then after a couple days, they are very, very good. Or if they feel still a little bit tacky, just like roll them around in your hands a little bit and that tackiness goes away just from the natural oils in your hands. Uh, here's what I'm going to try though. I'm going to put them on a skewer. Well, I could have just done that right on here, right? Get my fingerprints off there. Just kidding. And I'm going to just go put this on the rack in the oven and let that dry. I'm back and I am going to just do another coating. Now they're sliding around on there, so I'm going to put them back on the paintbrush one at a time. I kind of got carried away. I was starting Skylar's eBay. So she's going to have her own eBay. Well, not an actual store, just an eBay account. And uh, very different from when I did it 20 years ago. But yes, so these were in the oven like way longer than they needed to be, but that was okay. It still worked. It only takes about like five to 10 minutes and uh, to let them dry. Oh, I want that on the skewer though. I uh, will let them dry again and then do get in there and then um, I'll put one more coat. What am I doing? I'm so confused. I'm so excited for Skylar. Back in the oven and I'm going to separate them. And I just lay this right on the rack but I just make sure that each bead goes between a rack, between the metal. You know what I mean. This time I didn't forget. I'm going to try to just put more Mod Podge on them. I'm just going to hold them in place a little bit. You don't have to do this many coats. I just love doing it. I have a whole bucket of beads that need to be Mod Podged when I used to make them like it was an addiction. And that's going to be it for these. I will go dry them again. 
and really it only takes like five minutes in the oven at the lowest temp that your oven has. Okay, I'll be right back. We are done. I don't know if I can, you know, give you a good close up here. I will be taking a couple of pictures for the auction listing. You know, they're very basic, but they're so pretty. And it's a coincidence that it's purple and green, which I really love. So here's the deal. I could not get the name Skylar's World because I've been working on this. <laughs> this. This project started a long time ago, but now I'm all into getting Skylar's set up on eBay. So it's Skylar's Crafty World. And I am going to put her paper like this on there as the first listing and you know I have a whole stack of papers that she painted for me she would paint them she was getting paid per page and when they had a bunch they would mail them to me and then I just never got around to doing this so she stopped but I told her now that I'm doing this so she'll be able to have her job back painting paper if you know, if there's anyone who's interested in bidding on this stuff, give it a try. You know, just make Skylar happy. She would be absolutely thrilled if she knows that people are buying her painted paper that I will be cutting. Maybe I won't always. There's going to be changes along the way. But uh, I'm excited for her to have eBay and hopefully... Um, you know, Derek can get involved in this and, you know, she loves to do the perler bead things and she would like to make magnets to sell and different things like that. So we're going to give this a shot and we can at least do this. Now, I will do some more beads using her paper. You know, I really want to get back into doing paper bead tutorials. So subscribe, not just for the sewing stuff, but for this stuff too. Thank you so much for watching. Go check out the link down below to her first penny auction. I'll be back with more soon. Bye! And Skylar thanks you too.